Hey, it's Adriana for today's iPhone and Phone Dog. If you saw my unboxing vid, then you know I've got my hands on the Apple iPad. Now, rarely has there been a device that has caused so much hype, confusion, and even hatred than this guy right here. Probably the biggest question out there is, isn't it just a big iPod Touch? I'm not going to answer that for you here, but what I will do is show you a few app comparisons, pitting the iPad version of some programs versus the iPhone iPod Touch version, so you can decide for yourself. Now this is the GQ website, and um, I am looking at it on the iPad. It's kind of funny because it says GQ rocks the iPad. Read GQ on the iPad today and watch our video telling you everything you want to know. Well, I guess they didn't code it in HTML5. Now the current issue is Shia. Um, I think the one I have on the iPhone app actually is the older issue with Kobe on it. Let's go check that out. Now there was a lot of buzz about how this, uh, about how the iPad was going to change the face of publishing by offering uh, a new and, and robust platform for it. So I thought I'd give you a quick peek at what the GQ app looks like on the iPhone. And then we'll get to the iPad version. When you click on it, then you can see the cover and you've got Kobe Bryant. Dominates. Wow. Well, I guess he kind of does. Uh, nice shark skin suit. And if you're interested in knowing where I got it, you can read the credits. So you hit on the home button there. You can kind of just click through whatever you want. Here you've got different sections. Now once you're in a section, if you can actually kind of go through like this and see the different things, which is kind of neat. Turn it to its side and then you've got like a little mini magazine. Let's see what this looks like on the iPad. Now um, obviously a tablet is bigger than the iPhone. And if you want to know kind of what the how the experience can differ, there you go. So there's the difference. Now, similar to the iPad app, you can flick through. Um, I'm actually going to pull the camera back so you can see what I'm doing there. But this kind of gives you a more magazine-y kind of experience. Now, if you want a different way to navigate, they've got also a slider mechanism at the bottom. And you can jump to whatever story you want. And if you want yet something else, you can go up here to contents, hit that button up there, whoops, and you've got, you know, like your table of contents there. So this is actually kind of an interesting way to consume publications, editorial content. Um, you've got the thumbnail up top and the article on the bottom. And if you want to put the article, uh, render it in, into kind of a, a larger orientation then you can do that too and you can just scroll up this whole thing. NPR News on my iPhone. Again I'm doing this on an iPhone 3GS. Okay uh, you've got top stories by topic, newscast, you've got latest, uh, you click on one of these things and you get articles. Well, it looks pretty good and, and pretty handy. Nice thing to have in your pocket at all times if you're an NPR fan. Um, you can click back and then little news button there. Uh, come back to the main screen and let's see newscasts and you can listen now to their podcasts. Now they don't have a, a NPR news iPad app but NPR does put out a general kind of NPR iPad app. And so I'm, I'm again I'm zooming back here so you can get the full screen in here. It would be unfair to compare arts and life and music and all that because what we looked at in the other app was the news app. So let's look at the iPad app with the news feature. Okay. Um, let's click on Dynasty Star John Forsyth dies. Oh that was really upsetting by the way. He was great on Dynasty. He's also the voice of Charlie and Charlie's Angels. Now well, there you go. You got the you got the whole story, or if not the whole story, most of it. You know, I can't even say most of it. There's so much here. I, I can't. Wow. They did quite a write up on the man. Now, when you're done with this, you can hit home, go back. You can look at other stories. Some of these are actually podcasts, and so you can hit the play button there. Or you can hit playlist and you can actually create a playlist of, of different things that you want to listen to all in a row. So this is just like basically the content is the same, it's just it's the interface that's different. And obviously the screen real estate.
Now let's go to Epicurious on the iPhone. And when you launch it, you've got spring dinner, spring desserts. You got all these options for different types of dishes that you can look for. Um, say I want to look for a spring dinner. Quick chicken paella with sugar snap peas. Sounds pretty good, actually. You just flick and, or I should say swipe. You swipe and you can go through different options and you can view the recipe. And Korean rice bowl with steak, asparagus, and fried egg. Um, you've got recipe. You've got, oh, that does look good though. Yeah, it's all kind of on one scrollable small screen. Not bad, not bad. Uh, very handy to have. In all honesty, I will probably have my iPhone on me more often than I would have the iPad on me. So it's good to know this is here. Okay, let's go to the Epicurious iPad app. Lots of peppers and First thing you see, you see a whole mess of like different dishes. Uh, I think the last thing I had looked up was weeknight dinners. And so it kind of saves where you are, which is very, very neat. Um, you don't have to start from scratch every single time. Um, you hit the control panel. You got, oh, spring dinner, spring desserts. Um, let's say I'm looking for a spring dinner. Uh, let's see, you've got like a lot of options to scroll through and look at. Pineapple glazed chicken with jalapeno salsa. You see the ingredients list all there in one list and you can get rid of that by tapping on the screen and then you've got your instructions right there. In landscape, the ingredients actually stay where they are uh, and you can scroll through. It stay, stay on the left side. You've got the picture there, which you can actually click and see a larger image of. Here's a fun little thing. You know on the iPhone you got four icons in your dock there. Um, basically on the iPad you can have six. Hold down an icon and you see the, uh, the little X's show up there. If you only want five of them there, you can take it off. So you can have uh, like one, two, whatever. You can have up to six down here in your dock. If you wondered what happens to your iPhone apps that aren't optimized for the iPad, let me show you. Here's Gerbo Jam. It's kind of a fun little game. Now, gaming's been covered quite a bit on the iPad, and we'll cover it too. Um, but you know, not everybody's a hardcore gamer. Some people just like like the simple little fun apps that waste a little time. Now, aren't they cute? Yeah, on the iPad, which is, you know, large, um, it shows up about iPhone size. Now what you can do is hit that little thing, the two X there in the corner, and it will enlarge it. So yeah, in this case, it really is just a, like a really huge iPod touch. There's no extra functionality for some of these apps, but you can run them. And if they're using decent enough graphics, you don't have a loss of quality. Now, if they're not using, you know, decent graphics, like let's say you've got like text things for example, well if I zoom in there really close you can see how that's kind of bitmappy. So it all depends on how they develop this game. Um, look at that, isn't that adorable? So those were comparisons of three iPhone apps and three iPad app counterparts. Now if there are the comparisons you want to see, drop us a line over at todaysiphone.com and we'll do our best to get them out there to you. For now it's Adriana, thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs> oh,